So I thought I would do a video today on rating and reviewing books because I feel like a lot of people, first of all, everyone rates books differently and have different reasons for giving books certain ratings and everyone reviews them differently as well and I just thought I would talk about the way I do it and why. So first I guess I will talk about how I rate books. So I don't have a big science uh, behind it or anything. I don't have a lot of specific reasons for docking stars or adding stars or anything like that. Um, it's pretty simple for me really. If I love a book I give it five stars. <laughs> if I can say I loved it, it's five stars because I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> if I really liked a book, if I really enjoyed it, but I didn't love it, then it's four stars. <laughs> And if I liked a book, now see, and when it gets to three stars, it's a little bit different. When it's three stars, I have two different reasons usually for giving a book three stars. Either I enjoyed it but I had problems with it, or I enjoyed it but it did nothing really stood out as spectacular or mind-blowing. I'll give a book two stars if I didn't like it very much, but I hardly ever give books two stars and one stars because usually I don't finish books that I don't like. I have no problem giving up on books. Lately I have been uh, giving books more of a chance than I have in previous years because people have bought them for me or recommended them to me. So just recently, actually I read The Little Old Lady Who Broke All the Rules. If I bought that myself, uh, I would have put it down. I would have been like, this book is boring and stopped reading it. But my brother got it for me and he got it for me because he thought I would like it. So I continued reading it. And it got good, and I enjoyed it, and I think I gave it four stars. Um, because it was a lot of fun. I just wasn't in love with it. There you go, four stars. I will give half stars too for certain reasons. I might give a book three and a half stars if it was one of those books where I enjoyed it, but I didn't think it was spectacular, but there were parts of it that I really enjoyed, like maybe I really enjoyed the characters, or uh, it was really fast paced, or something like that. Same with I might give a book four and a half stars instead of four stars. Um, if there, if I really enjoyed it, but there were other aspects that I enjoyed even more than the rest of it, uh, but still wasn't enough to push it up to five. I'm not like I don't have I don't have specifics as to how I rate books. It's just how I feel. If I read it and I feel comfortable giving it a certain star rating, then that's what I give it. I used to always say that I found it difficult rating books because five stars isn't enough of a range. And I always thought that it would be easier to rate a book if you had ten stars to rate it out of. Because then all of the books that I read wouldn't all be within like two star ranges, right? Like most of the books that I read and rate are three, four, or five stars. I hardly ever have books that are two or one stars because I usually don't finish those books. But then I was thinking about it the other day and if I had 10 stars to rate a book, most of the books that I read and rate would be rated 7 stars or more. I, if I, <laughs> most books, because when you think about it, 60% is not very good. Like you don't want to get 60% in a class. Like I know a lot of people will and depending on what class it is, 60% can be good. Like when I got 60% in math and science, that was good for me. <laughs> but. 60% is not great. 60% is not what you want to aim for. Like, you want at least a 70. And to me, I feel like 70% is equal to a 3 star. So 7 stars and 3 stars. So I still feel like I would still... All of my book ratings would still be in 7 stars or more. So it wouldn't... It wouldn't change it that much. And then the next thing that I wanted to talk about is reviewing books. And um, because I know there's a lot of people who don't like to review books if they give it less than three stars because they don't want to be mean. I like to review everything that I read. I like to talk about books and I like to talk about the things that I like and I like to talk about the things that I didn't like. And I would like to think that everybody who watches and reads book reviews understand that not everyone has the same opinions on things. And just because one person doesn't like one book doesn't mean you won't. And just because one person loved a book doesn't mean you will. Everyone is different. And if someone has valid reasons to back up the things that they did and didn't like about it, those could be things that you may or may not like about a book. So specific things like that might make you want to or not read a book. But I feel like if, like, first of all, I, I enjoy watching book reviews where people did not like the book because the people just rant and are mad and it's hilarious. Even books that I have read and I have liked. 
I just think it's funny and fun to watch people rant about books they didn't like. It's also just enjoyable listening to someone talk about what they thought about something. I like to talk about other things too that I liked and didn't like, whether it's about books or movies or about experiences at a store that I was at or a restaurant or about a food that I tried. I'm gonna tell people about these things if they want to hear about it, right? So I feel like it is not mean to post a bad review about a book if you didn't like it, because just because you didn't like it doesn't mean other people won't like it. And when you think about it, people like listening to people talk about things they don't like. And people like talking about things they don't like. Like when you get bad service somewhere, you're gonna tell people about it. And you're gonna rant about it, you're gonna be like, oh my god, you not believe the horrible service I had at this restaurant? I mean, really. Really. Also, if people didn't love hearing the bad things, then maybe honest trailers wouldn't be so popular? I mean, <laughs> they cut movies up into tiny little pieces and they're so funny even if they're not true or even if they are true there's there's movies that they do on there that I love and I still think their th their honest trailers are hilarious they're so funny it's funny just like hearing people talk about the things that they don't like about things even if you disagree with them and if the person whose work is getting reviewed gets a bad review don't read it, or don't watch it. Th there you go. I feel like you probably shouldn't watch your reviews anyway. I mean, unless you ask someone to review something, then maybe. But don't go searching. Oh, I wonder if anyone has reviewed my book. First of all, because everyone has different opinions and you're never gonna please everyone. Never gonna happen. It's impossible and it's just gonna get to your head and you're just gonna be like, oh my god, they didn't like my book or they didn't like my movie or they didn't like my music. But guess what? Someone does. I'm sure someone does. There's nothing wrong with writing bad reviews and if you don't want to write bad reviews then you don't have to. But you don't, I feel like you shouldn't feel like you are hurting the author by writing a bad review. Because first of all, I feel like you can't say that you've made it unless you have a bad review because then maybe they're all fake because you can't please everyone <laughs> so you need to have at least a few bad ones you need to it has to happen <laughs> this was kind of rambly I think that's all I have to say please leave comments down below and maybe we can chat and that will be fun and I guess that's all have a good day